becomes a Tootsie Roll to me. So how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? A question almost as important as the meaning of life itself. Okay, maybe not, but stick with us as we count down the top 10 untold truths of Tootsie Rolls and Tootsie Pops. Or I need to know. Mr. Owl. Ha -hoo, ha -hoo. Mr. Owl was first featured in a 1970 commercial for the brand. The commercial also starred three other animals, Mr. Cow, Mr. Fox, and Mr. Turtle, who revealed that despite their cleverness and life experience, they always end up biting a Tootsie Pop before getting to the middle, much like the rest of us. Hey, no biting! Finally, Mr. Owl is asked, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? Mr. Owl, glasses, mortarboard, and all, licks three times before finally biting the candy, declaring that it takes three licks, much to the dismay of the boy asking. Does that answer your question? There's actually a reason for Mr. Owl's animal form. Historically, owls are associated with wisdom. His creators really wanted to emphasize that Mr. Owl was the smartest of all the animals, as indicated by his academic cap, usually worn by graduates. He was created by the ad agency Donner and voiced by Paul Winchell, a familiar voice in commercials and notable for roles such as Tigger from Winnie the Pooh and Crackle of Rice Krispies fame. Snap, crackle, and pow. Tootsie Rolls are over 100 years old. They're like a million years old. <laughs> Tootsie Rolls first entered the scene in 1907 after Leo Hirschfeld, an Austrian immigrant, patented the technique that gives Tootsie Rolls their unique texture. Interesting texture. <laughs> they resemble taffy or caramels, but aren't quite either confection. Tootsie Rolls were the first penny candy to be individually wrapped in America. It's no wonder this treat became so popular, especially among soldiers. The U.S. military valued them for their sustainability and hardiness. They wouldn't melt in the heat or go bad over time and were a source of quick energy. It just gives me so much more energy. In one instance, a pilot survived on Tootsie Rolls for three days after his plane was shot down over the Sahara Desert. Now that's a sustainable candy. Now that's sustainable. In 1950, during the Korean War, Tootsie Rolls was the code name for mortar shells in the Marines. At the Battle of Chosen Reservoir, the 1st Marine Division radioed for an airdrop of Tootsie Rolls. You can probably guess what happened happened next. Candy! Candy! Instead of getting mortar shells, the boxes were filled with the candy. Luckily, it boosted morale and kept the Marines sustained through the below freezing temperatures. Cold. Far too cold. They also discovered that chewed up Tootsie Rolls could patch holes in their vehicle's fuel lines. Talk about DIY. Tootsie Rolls' cousin, the Tootsie Pop, became popular during the Great Depression because of their low cost. Originally, they came in five traditional flavors, chocolate, cherry, raspberry, orange, and grape. Tootsie Pops really do take lollipops to a whole new level by adding a chocolate-flavored Tootsie Roll at the center of the hard candy. Not only is it tasty, but it's fun to eat. And even more fun eating them. 60 million Tootsie Rolls a day. Oh, that's a lot of candy. In 2002, it was reported that over 60 million Tootsie Rolls and 20 million Tootsie Pops were produced every day. Think about it, that's a lot of candy. Despite being around for so long, Tootsie Candies have managed to stay popular through the generations. One explanation for this is likely their advertising. Everyone's gonna know all about the eggs. After their popular catchphrase, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop, came out in the 1970s, customers have kept coming back to answer the brand's famous question. I want answers. Of course, their lovable mascot, Mr. Owl, has stayed in business ever since with his no-fuss answer of three licks. Tootsie confections are all gluten and nut-free, meaning they can be enjoyed by even more people, especially those with food allergies. All right. Your allergies. Unfortunately, they aren't vegan as they contain certain dairy products, but vegetarians should be able to eat them just fine. As a testament to their popularity, the company claims to receive over 20,000 letters from children around the world yearly. You can probably guess what question they keep asking. Same question. Same answer. Captain Tootsie. Aye, aye, Captain. You've heard of Captain America, Captain Marvel, and even Captain Underpants. But we can bet you've probably never heard of this candy's ambassador hero, Captain Tootsie. You got it, Tootsie Pop. 
He was created for Tootsie Roll in 1943 and first appeared in Ace Comics number 76. The comic strips and books featured Captain Tootsie and his sidekick, a boy named Rollo, along with two other cohorts, Fatso and Fisty, who together made up the Secret Legion. Like superhero movies. The Secret Legion was a group of kids mentored by Captain Tootsie and often went on adventures. Captain Tootsie, whose real name was Thomas Tootsie, had blonde hair and wore a red shirt with a yellow T in the middle, black pants, and yellow boots. He was known for having superhuman strength and eating Tootsie Rolls as a power-up whenever he needed a boost of energy. That's a lot of energy to deal with. His adventures took place in the 40s and 50s and at some point even went to space. The One Day Sunday strips were frequently featured by publishers and even made several appearances in newspapers. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. The stories were light and kid-friendly, with Captain Tootsie quickly and easily <laughs> defeating his enemies. Even though the comics ended in the 1950s, Captain Tootsie will always live on in our hearts as the OG mascot for Tootsie Roll candies. No offense, Mr. Owl. Man to man, mascot to mascot. The Shooting Star Rapper Look, a shooting star! This rumor has been going around for quite a while. No one is really sure when or where it started, but legend has it that if you find a rapper with a Native American shooting a star from his bow, you could get a free Tootsie Pop. Free food always tastes good. While the company itself has never offered this, some shops in the 70s and 80s honored this rumor on their own volition, but they eventually had to stop when it became too expensive for their business. It's too expensive. I'm done. According to Tootsie Roll Industries, one in every four to six candy wrappers has the shooting star, which is just as frequent as any of the other images appear. It's easy to see why this type of promotion would be ridiculously costly. In the 1980s, the brand began distributing the short story The Legend of the Indian Rapper as a consolation prize to children who had mailed in their star wrappers. It is also said that it was Mr. Owl's idea to add the shooting star to the wrappers. The story goes that he was sitting on his branch one night Night when he saw a shooting star in the sky. This gave him the idea to add the star to the rappers in order to give fans the necessary luck that may be needed to discover how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. Good idea. So even though you don't get a free lollipop from the star rapper, at least you're getting some well-deserved good luck. Mm -hmm. That's a win, mm. win, win, win. How many licks does it really take? That's kind of an impossible question. This truly is the question that has plagued many generations. An absurd amount of studies have been conducted with generally wide or inconclusive results. Letters to the company have been written, and household experiments and competitions have taken place since the question was first posed in the 1970s. Why are you so curious? I'm not curious. Today, we give you the answer. Well, sort of. According to studies and some YouTubers, there really isn't just one answer. The number of licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop is entirely dependent on so many factors. I will take it into consideration. The University of Wisconsin tallied up a theoretical average of 319.8 licks using mathematical models. The University of Michigan had engineers create an automated licking machine, whatever that means, and averaged out at 411 licks to reach the middle of the candy. Purdue University came up with 364 licks. One YouTube food theorist insists that there are more variables to take into consideration when conducting these experiments. What an interesting experiment. For example, saliva, mouth pH, mouth temperature, and texture of the tongue all play a role in how quickly the candy melts down. With a team gathered, he concluded that it takes an average of 364.5 licks, which is on par with the results from the universities. However, while trying to reach the middle with the least number of licks possible, it was discovered that heat and saliva production are the biggest factors contributing to the rapid melting of the hard shell candy. So there you go, a nice, general, inconclusive answer for you. Of course, you can always test it yourself and mail in your results to Tootsie Roll Industries, where you'll be rewarded with a personalized clean stick award from Mr. Owl himself. But it's better than nothing, right? A revolutionary candy. It's revolutionary. 
Tootsie Roll is undoubtedly a candy with a lot of tricks up its sleeve. It has had some major breakthroughs ever since it was created in the 1890s. For example, they were pioneers in the way candy is now sold. While today, individually wrapped candies sound like basic hygiene 101, it wasn't always the norm. You've been talking about how you would have done things differently, so... In fact, Tootsie Rolls were the first candy to be sold that way all the way back in 1905. It represented a considerable advancement in the food world and led to a whole new perspective on candy sales. I think it's important to see things in perspective. Tootsie Rolls were also responsible for solving a big problem that plagued candy makers back in the 20th century. As delicious as chocolate confections were, during the hot summer days, before the luxuries like refrigeration or air conditioning were invented, it was impossible to keep them from melting in the sun. Okay, so by melting, you meant melting. Candy makers were constantly trying to come up with new solutions to keep chocolate from melting in the heat, which was nearly impossible. While Tootsie Rolls aren't chocolate per se, they are a pretty satisfying chocolatey substitute when they remained intact during those hot days, which basically gave them a godlike status. No wonder they became so popular so quickly. If you're the one still standing after the others have melted away, of course you're going to get the recognition you deserve. Finally, some recognition. Disturbingly durable? Foolproof and durable. As we've established before, Tootsie Rolls aren't technically chocolate. They're kind of like a mix between a taffy, caramel, and chocolate, and they aren't exactly a confection either. Well, what is it? They don't really have a real category yet. And since they don't have a food group, it would make sense that they don't really have an expiration date either. Yes, all candies have a relatively long shelf life, as they should, but Tootsie Rolls are surprisingly in the lead when it comes to being the most durable. Seems durable, yes. Melvin Gordon, a 95-year-old Tootsie Roll industry CEO, praised just how much the candy was indestructible before he died in 2015. He claimed that they would still eat some of the candy that had been made back in 1938 and that it still tasted as good as new. And if it happened to be too hard for them to bite into, they would just lick it instead. What? Lick it? The company has since continued to boast about the candy's resilience, claiming it's the perfect candy since it travels well, doesn't melt, and doesn't spoil. The perfect snack, indeed. So, those little Tootsie Rolls you found in the bottom of the drawer from a few Halloweens back? Well, chances are, they're still technically good. Who would have thought? What's safe to eat and what's not? Lawsuit? Low lawsuit. Every successful major company is bound to see its fair share of lawsuits over the years, and Tootsie Roll Industries is no exception. In December of 2018, a class action lawsuit was filed against the company for the use of partially hydrogenated oil, PHO, in their candies. Is that even allowed? a food additive banned by the FDA. The company claimed Tootsie Rolls and Tootsie Pops were safe for human consumption, but PHOs are known to cause cardiovascular disease, cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. That doesn't sound so safe, does it? This type of oil comes from soybeans and has added hydrogen atoms to extend shelf life and keep food from breaking down. See the molecules? PHOs, while less expensive than animal fats, are the primary dietary source of artificial trans fat in processed foods. Although trans fat occurs at low levels naturally in meat, dairy products, and other edible oils, there's a reason for the big stink made about it. Consuming too much of it can lead to heart disease and other complications. The FDA extended the compliance date for the termination of the use of PHOs until January 2020 for products that were produced before June 18, 2018. That's a long time. Tootsie Roll Industries has since respected this deadline, and as of now, the list of ingredients for both Tootsie Rolls and Tootsie Pops does not include the additive anymore. Yay for us! Yay! Hey. Yay! Oh, yay! All the flavors. Then try to notice the flavors. While the original flavor for both Tootsie Rolls and Pops is chocolate, the candies have since expanded to include a multitude of different flavors. So we have some options. Fruit chews are essentially bite-sized Tootsie Rolls that come in variety bags. If you happen to really love these candies, they're sold in different sized bags with the largest being four pounds. That's heavy. 
that's over 270 individually wrapped pieces of candy. While Tootsie Roll flavors are pretty standard, Tootsie Pops are on a whole other level. This takes it to a whole other level. There's blackberry, caramel, orange, strawberry vanilla, banana, and pomegranate, just to name a few. There are also seasonal flavors such as candy cane around Christmas time, vanilla cherry for Valentine's Day, purple punch for Easter, and candy corn around Halloween. My mouth is watering. I can't be around these. Tootsie Rolls are sold everywhere from supermarkets to vending machines and even dollar stores in over 75 countries. So no matter where you are, you should be able to get your Tootsie fix. It's everywhere! Got a favorite Tootsie Roll flavor? Let us know. Tap or click on another great video, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad.